Okay, so this is the start of episode three of the zero to one million using foot trading the code UK. So what we're doing today now we have a good budget is looking at tier one buying prices and we're on Shadow Hunter specials and then obviously for the platform you're currently trading on. What I'm gonna teach you during this is gonna basically be the same for Xbox and PC on how to use these spreadsheets. Although there's instructions here as well that obviously can help you. So definitely do read these before you continue, like if you're gonna use the site. So you want to refer to the last update, make sure it's on to the current update that you know from the routine. Again, you'll get the hang of this if you're in the Discord server, we tell you what the last update is and how long this is good for. As you can see, the prices are now five hours old, but they're still fine. They last all night. These prices go into the overnight flips. So now what you can do is you come down to the document and you're going to see these headers, okay? You're going to see the name and rating, the version, the chem starter buy of MPR, which it tells you what it is here. MPR percentage is basically the maximum price range, okay? So if this percent is above 95%, you're going to lose coins on that card because the maximum price is obviously 100% and there's 5% tax in foot, so you're going to lose coins if you buy above 95 Due to this, we advise you buying at 91% or less. 92, sorry. So if anything here is above 92, you'd avoid it. As of right now, you're fine. So if you're wondering how I just did that, is I clicked on the headers, okay? So if I click on this header, it filters it high to low for NPR. So that's the cheapest NPR right now. And if I press it again, that's the highest, okay? Um, using that though, you can also filter into versions. So if you click on the version here, it will put them into like order. So it'll put Champions League, then it'll put Europa, and you can just scroll down like that basically using the version. This is a very beneficial way to do it if you're searching one by one. What I'm going to be teaching you during this video today is how I personally use this document because a lot of people seem to rely on the refresh tool to a special shadows, which a lot of you guys will know if you don't. It's it's really fell off from last year, I can assure you. But this is the new thing I personally suggest you doing is just searching one by one. So you'd search Ivan Perisic, Champions League Rare, 22k is a buy, 25 and a half to sell. And you basically do that for free cards, okay? This is one way you can do it, or you can filter it low to high here and go like that. But I prefer this way because you can just search all the players within the rarity quality, the equality you're choosing. So what I'm going to say to you now is remember Ivan Perisic, the buy price is 22 with a Shadow Hunter. And that's a Champions League live version of the card. So remember these three names, Icardi, Sanson, and Perisic. Remember their buy prices you see here and what I do to try and identify these deals. So I'll come back to you in two seconds once I've um, got onto foot. Okay, so now we're on foot. The first card to look at, I've just got to double check the pricing again. Ivan Perisic, Champions League live. So we go Perisic. Again, I do this every single time I want to trade Special Shadows because personally I think this is the best way. And you're not in as much competition to obtain cards this way because you're searching for that specific at that time. So Ivan Perisic, it's a Champions League Live, which is obviously the road to the final because this is a static card. And then you're looking to buy the Shadow or Hunter for 22k or less. The first thing you do when you're looking at cards, depending on the hours you're looking, it's always good to just double, like double check in case a certain special gets hit because of an SBC or he got very inflated and come down basically. But you always want to double check that the sell price like this at 25 and a half isn't flooded. So what I'm noticing here is that there's a bunch of 21Ks. However, because these are live cards as well, they're very volatile to going up and down. So what you're looking at here is there's a lot of Hunters and Shadows. This is a card I personally say avoid. Only because we're in a day of the week, which is currently Friday night. Oh, sorry, it's Thursday night now. And these kind of cards are subject to go down or up. But... If you want to take the gamble, you could buy basically. So what you'd be doing here is you go to the Hunter price and the buy price is 22 with a Hunter or Shadow. You check here like this. There's a bunch of 25 and a half. You just check up to 22, okay? If there was more than five, then it's already a cause for concern. It shouldn't really be that easy to pick them up. But in this situation, it is quite late at night. So these might just be at a low point. So what I'm just going to do is put it up to 25, 500. And I noticed it was glitching there, but it's not now. So there's a bunch of 22 and a half, basically the buy price. And then there's 25K three hour listings, a bunch of four hour listings. What's the latest listing? Five hours. So yeah, this card, I'm not going to lie to you. This card has got a definite chance of selling, but due to him being a live card, he's obviously subject to change in price, depending if Inter Milan perform or if he gets injured or for whatever reason, the card could go down or up. At 22k though, you're not really taking too much of a risk. It's just in this situation, there's a lot of hunters there. At the, buy, the sell price is 25.5k. There's a lot of hunters there right now. If you're looking for the faster sales, these are the kind of cards you wouldn't want to really look at. 
One more thing I want to note before I continue checking cards is notice my budget is 243k. Um, a lot of people seem to make the mistake of basically having a 300k budget and then they go and buy an Inform Lewandowski for 110k, uh, a Campos Road to the uh, Rule Breaker for 55k or something. To me, that's the wrong way to be special card trading with that budget because they're not understanding that chem style trading with specials actually does take time for cards to sell. If you're trying to actually optimize this area, make as many coins as possible out of the day, then you need to be spreading your bets along a mass amount of cards rather than just two or three because profit per card shouldn't be absolutely insane. But the whole trick about it is buying in mass because some sell faster than others. So when them cards sell, you replace them with new cards and you keep buying. This way you've always got as many as possible in your transfer list. So with that budget of 243k, in a real world you wouldn't spend more than 10% per card, okay? Like so in that situation you wouldn't spend more than 24.3 thousand per special card. Um I'm gonna take the exception of going up to about 32k per special, but I definitely advise try stick towards 10% of your budget per card if you're on underneath a million coins. Once you get above a million, you should be typically okay to start flipping. 10 without even worrying about how much you're paying per card even 5 to 10 but you ideally want at least 8 eight to 9 specials to actually see a result because let's say one doesn't sell overnight but the other 8 do if you want to get out of the other card because I don't know it's Saturday night and the card's due to sell off and etc if you take a like 1k loss on that other card that didn't sell the other 8 that you got made about 3 to 4k a card or 2 to 3k that one loss is not noticeable when it looks in mass because these aren't hard to pick up. This is a very simple way to trade when you're given buy prices. So you have to accept the odd loss on a certain special card if it, if it comes to it. This is why I'm mentioning when you look at live cards rotated to the finals, one to watches, you need to bear in mind that these cards are subject to change in price depending on how they perform or if the player gets injured. So if you look to our one to watch, for example, let me just get one up from the site. A one to watch is obviously dependent on the player himself because obviously... The player's got to score goals or have a good performance, basically, to um, get an inform. So if we look at one to watch and just search and like that, and then we look at, I don't know, Thoran Torres, which currently says 35,000 coins is the buy price for a one to watch of Shadow Hunter. So if I look at him on the game, like this, and obviously put the version to this, you'd come across these when you're scrolling down the page because you're searching one by one per card. So the buy price was 35 and the sell price is 39 for the Shadow Hunter. So again, this card's quite good right now because he's not come down dramatically if he has a tool. He's holding 39k right now. It's late hours. So he's not really dropped. The reason that these cards are issued then buy and sell prices is because we do account for fluctuations and how the market works. We do know a lot about it. So obviously, we're aware of how the market's going to react overnight, which what you're looking at here, I can assure you during 6pm to 8pm, there was probably 37ks on the market just generally. Allowing that the next person to sell their Ferran Torres when they're just selling their team, they might have a Hunter card on their player. They might either stick it up on open bid for 32k or something and buy now 45, or they put their buy now to 35k just to ensure they get a quick sell. And obviously, that's where you're buying their card because obviously the buy price is 35 for Hunter and you're making money that way. In that situation where he's at the buy price, he's at the sell price, sorry, just generally without the chem star, what you can do is put 35k into here, which is the buy price on the site. And you're looking for any Hunter card you can see. So what you notice here, there's a Hunter one there. It's got a Hunter on it. Also Shadow as well, because we did mention that, but I don't think you'll see Shadows here. Look at the ones all below an hour remaining with a Hunter card on. So in this situation, there's only one card. So that card you keep your eyes on, okay? He fits my budget just about. I do pull exceptions because obviously I'm capable to sell these cards faster than others. But your budget should be 10% per card. So what I'm going to do is try and pick up some deals and then I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so I found this card on the site. The buy price is currently 33,000 for this card. It's not the 83 though. 33,000 for Hunter for this card and the sell price is 36.5 at minimum. As of right now, there was just one for 34k, but it's just gone and sold. Um, in this situation with the actual bids, you see without the Hunter, he's 35k right now. So when someone goes to sell their team, it's very likely if you sat here just on the specific like this, depending on the time of the day. Again, late hours, you're not going to see a lot pop up. It's very likely that the person to sell their Voland in their team or in their club, if they put a Hunter card on it and they're selling their cards without realising they've got a Hunter on it or not taking into account of the price of the Hunter, um, 
they're going to undercut the 35s and they're going to probably want a quick sale. That's what generally goes through a FIFA player's mind, like a natural player. And in that situation, you'd be waiting for the 33k with the Hunter Chem star to pop up and you'd obviously buy their card. You can also check open bid as well at 33k with the Hunter. What you're going to notice here though is that this isn't the same info. This is the 86, so you're not going to be able to get this. Again, you could look at the 86 on the site, which if I just double check now, just as a cross reference, because that was the 84 we were referring to. The buy price for the 86 is currently 35,000 coins and the sell price is 39. So if you bought this on bid, so if you put it to 35k instead of 33, and essentially if you're able to pick up I don't know, anything under the hour at 35, again, it's really late right now, so there's hardly any supply, but if you win this on bid for 35 or less, you're going to make money because the sell price is 39 and you know the card's good because you've already checked that the average price isn't flooded and stuff and this card isn't really subject to change. So again, even right now, remember we only issued the minimum sell price at 39. You could get 39, 750 or 40k in this situation, which is obviously making even more coins than what you'd get just selling at the sell price. So definitely do check that out before you jump into that. So again, I'm going to keep my eyes on this for the next 20 minutes, alongside checking other cards, obviously, because we don't just wait 20 minutes on one card. Whilst I do that, I'll come back to you once this card's nearly expired and if I've got any other deals. So I've just been searching through one by one, and this is what I'm saying. Late at night, you're going to see that they just sit on the market for you to buy. So you could just sit here. If, let's say the buy price is 35k. The buy price right now is 36 of a Shadow of Hunter, so I'm going to buy this card, but it's not going to sell fast anyway. So if you sat here waiting for 36 to basically expire, or pop up, sorry, if you manage to get them like this, then obviously it's good, but at 2am in the morning UK time, or even after 11pm, it's a lot better to look at bids. As if there's any buy now, obviously double check the buy now to see if they're sitting, because if they're sitting for this price, you obviously can pick this card up. Because again, these prices are updated every single day on the site. So the buy price is 36, the sell price is 40,000. It says list for 12 hours. When you're online, it's one hour listings and keep relisting until you go into bed. If you sleep for six or eight hours, even that way, still sell for list for 12 hours because if there's one hour or two hours of a point of the day where you haven't got it on the market, it's wasted hours not being on the market. It can change a lot, trust me. So basically you list it for 40,000 for 12 hours. As I'm probably not going to be made uh, I'm not going to be maintaining this account heavily, but I'm going to list for 12 hours as it will be 1 p.m. UK time then. And I might come and double check again then. But it should sell in 12 hours. If the card doesn't sell in the first listing of a 12 hour, as long as it's like due to the day right now, it's Thursday. Let's say it's come to Friday night and I still haven't sold the card. Start considering changing the price. Even if you lower it by one denomination, two domino uh, denominations, you need to do this to make sure you sell the card. Because if you buy into the peak out, the peak days of the week of foot, obviously Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you buy in them days, you need to make sure that you're selling in them days. This is why we call it quick flips on the site. The reason for this is it's because it's normally the like most inflated time of the of the week, basically. And cards normally tend to get sold off every week after weekend league. So I'm going to basically continue out there now. I'm going to list this for 40k. And I'm going to continue trying to find open bids and buy now some cards. So I've just double checked that at 36 just going to double check the bids again and just make sure I watch any that are on open bids. Again, try and spread your bets. As I've already got one vid out, I'm not going to really be looking to buy these, but I'm just going to keep an eye on them. So as I've already got one vid out in Shadow, I don't want to buy two of the same card of a budget of 200k. It's not great. I can double check Hunter because I can buy one of different variation because obviously a Hunter in Shadow is a different sale. There's none on the market to buy. So again, this is a dead card now. So currently what I've got watched is... A Voland that sold for buy now price. That was the Hunter from earlier. So that Voland on the bid, that can pay up to 35k for referring to the site with a Hunter card. And this Orioza Bull and the Ferran Torres. So if I pick up one of each of these at the buy price or less, then obviously that's what we're trying to do here. And that's the whole concept of the site. But notice how bids are the better thing to do. Just go and watch a bunch of stuff and then leave it and then come back whenever it's due to expire and then try and win them as cheap as possible on bid. And obviously just refer to the sell price on the site to sell. I'll come back to you once I've got more deals. Okay, so we managed to pick up another deal, and this was a buy now that was sitting for three minutes, okay? The buy price on the site of Shadow is 20, uh, 29,000 coins. We got it for 1.5k under, and the sell price on the site is 31,500. So if we sell this card on that alone, it's an easy 1.5k. They take like 15 seconds to find these deals, 15 to 20 seconds, It's not, and it's not really like competition to sit there and buy the card. So when you find the actual card and the deal on the market for that card, 
you don't have to sit there fighting with 20 other people to win that filter like you do on the refresh. So you can see how much more effective this is when you've got loads of coins. You buy 100 of these and just go off FIFA for the day, come back and then they sell. You're making 2.5k per card, multiply that by 100, which is the trick to this in mass. And that's 250,000 coins like that. And it takes you about between 6 to 8 p.m. You could do that easily. And then you've got the whole rest of the day to just chill or play games or play your champs. And you made 250k. It doesn't even take two hours. Like when you get the hang of it and you're faster, it takes like half an hour, 20 minutes. It's just gaining confidence. At the start, you're going to be quite slow with this. You're going to start understanding what goes wrong, what can go right, how to learn from it, etc. How you're listening, how it might be affecting what you're doing. But apart from that, it's as simple as that, really. What I'm going to now do is show you a different filter you can do instead of searching players one by one. As of right now, I have actually got a bunch of stuff I'm watching. I had a bunch of Allens that, as you can see, I've been selling, but I didn't get hold of any because I forgot to bid. So one thing to do is make sure you do check back to the stuff you're bidding on. That sold for too much. That's currently at the buy price. It's actually low. I think the buy price on this is currently 34,000 buy, 37,000 sell. So obviously in a 12 hour listing, you'd sell up for 37K. So if we win this below 34K, if we want it at that price right now on bid, which is very likely during the hours of 2 a.m. in the morning UK time. If we win this and bid anywhere near that, we right now we're looking at 4.4k uh, profit, I think. 4.5k profit after tax. Yeah, 4.5k profit after tax on this card. Maybe just over that. So you can really see how effective this is when you're buying more of a variation of cards rather than just buying one or two for 70k each and making 4k a card. It's all about buying in mass. That's the trick to this. So what I'm going to now do is show you the filter I use to search one by one. Oh, I showed you one search from a one. Um, special and then shadow. What this will do is it will basically search in mass and you just use the search bar on the site. On that document at the top right corner, there's a search bar. You can just search the player's name and it will come up. So you start like this, okay? You start at 10,000 here. And then all I did here was press R1. If you're on Xbox, it's RB. And if you're on PC, it's whatever button it is for quick price, okay? You press quick price once to so write R1, okay? And you just search the market. So you've got 10 and 12 and a half in there. So all you now do is go to the 45th minute or whatever. Just start basically looking for things that you might think are deals. Again, you're looking special shadow or special hunter. That depends if you're looking for hunters or shadows, basically. Or just do one set and then do the next one. So all you want to do is go towards the 59th minute. So I see an inform here for 12.5k. If I search him onto the website and I type in Romero, he doesn't come up, okay? I think that's due to him being a current team of the week right now. But I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, he's currently just got into Team of the Week. So we had the brand new informs for the current week on the Sundays. It's currently Thursday, so he's only been in packs for a day. So he's not going to be on there yet. So you just avoid them if that's the situation. Again, they get up there, they'll get they be added to foot like basically within four days of the Team of the Week releasing. We always allow the informs to actually settle properly before adding them. So there's nothing in that page. We already know Alvedi sucks, but you can double check that to make sure. Yeah, Alvedi's bride price is 11. They were all like 12k. So now you've checked this price in, okay? You're going to simply go down to your min buy now and you're going to press R1 or RB again on the min buy now this time. So the quick price R1 or RB on Xbox, you press it once on here. It will automatically change this one. Just press R1 on this as well or RB on Xbox. And then basically press circle or B just so it backs out and your filter should look like this now. Now all you do is search again and you repeat the exact same process. So again, all you're looking for here is potential deals. You might see some bids like you did there. But again, we know it's a brand new inform. Again, you could bid on this at 10 because you know you can't lose money on informs if you know enough about the market. If you don't, just leave it. It's not a big deal. So you're looking at players like Golovin, okay? And you think, is this maybe a deal? Again, it's in 40 minutes on the market. It doesn't mean anything. The buy price is 14000 You need to be strict to the buy price when it comes to this. This way you're reducing any kind of risk of losing coins. So all these keyboard clips you can hear is me basically searching a card into the site and finding out if the buy price is matching the buy now that I see here with the chem store. So I'm just going to keep going across until I'm just, like, if I feel like I find a deal, I'll obviously buy the card. So Marvi's buy price is currently 13,000. That's 13 and a half K, but it's got a bit of 12 K. So the buy price is 13,000 and the listing price of 12 hours is 15,750. These do sell. The reason they're not selling like this is because it's currently 2 a.m. in the morning UK time and he's got a buy now of 13 and a half like that. Shadow cards don't tend to sell like that because... They normally focus towards a sole player that's buying a Marvi for their team with the Shadow card on. Because obviously Shadows cost quite a lot. That's why this method works. 
So we're just going to keep going through these cards like this. And this one's 13k. So basically what you're doing is just checking all these players that you think might be buys. Again, you don't have to check every single player. But if you feel there's a deal on the cards, then it's always worth checking every card. But it is quite time consuming. So if you once you get the hang of it, you'll start realising what's a bad deal, what's a good deal, etc. So we're just going to keep going across. Don't expect to find deals like this very fast. Normally at these hours, it's easier to find them. Or they're close to the buy price all the time, as you'll see in here. Not a lot of these are far off the buy price. So we know Golovin, we already just checked him. So if we know if we see a 14,000 on that, we buy the card. Just going to double check that harness because you'd be surprised with some of the cards you see on here. 13,000, what was that buy price? So that's actually a deal right there. The harness in himself. So the buy price on the site is 13,000. The sell price is 14,750. So there's 1k profit in that card alone. With this kind of budget, there's no, there's no harm in buying that because you could buy 10 or 15 of them and make 15k overnight. With literally 5 to 10 minutes work, depending on what you're doing or how many you're buying. So that, that can date, uh, can might have been quite good. Just going to double check. So the buy price on that is 14000 So someone just bought that for their team, basically. Obviously, you're not going to win every single deal because other people will be doing this for the site at the same time as you. The more you try it, the easier it is, basically. So if I just remember correctly, what was that Amavi's price? The Amavi buy price is 13000 and there's a buy now there for 12750 14, 15. There was a buy now 15, 7, I saw a 14, 7, 50 afterwards. So I'd always recommend as well when doing this, because I'll be transparent to you with this. Obviously, again, that's a live card. When you're at budgets like this, yeah, you need to bear in mind, is that card flooded at the sell price? Because they do still sell, or they're just slower sellers, but you don't want to be buying cards that have got more risk of not selling overnight. Again, the way you judge that is just put the sell price in the site into the FIFA game, sorry, with the chem stall that it tells you to buy with. The sell price is currently 15, 7, 50. You just search the market, okay? You know, it's like this. I'd look at this and say, that's perfectly fine. Is there a 12K there as well? There's a 12K buy now. So we're going to pick this one up, okay? As I said, try to spread your bets as much as possible. So if you have a lot of coins, let's say over a million or 500K, you could ideally pick up all three at the buy price if you are comfortable in seeing what I'm seeing here like I am and judging this to sell for 15750 I can tell you now in this situation... He will sell at 15750 over a 12-hour listing, possibly taking a few extra hour one-hour one listings when it comes to tomorrow. But he should sell. Um, so we're making 2K. To, no, we're actually making 3,000 coins on this card alone because tax is only 800 coins. And we're selling at 15750 So if you wanted to, you can make another 2K per card just picking up this one and this one when the buy price is 13, so they're absolutely fine. You've also double-checked the market already to see there's only a page at 15750 So you know these are good deals. Even though he's live and even though he comes with a volatility of obviously dropping, but he can't drop a lot as he's 84 rated and he's a special card. So we've got one deal there. You're obviously going to be wondering why I didn't pick up the other two. But as I said, one put, like with the budget I've got, one player per time. Don't be buying three of the same card because you need to ensure that these are going to sell faster. This way you don't have to rely on one card to get into a buying power stage where people want the card for their team. You're just focusing on people who just randomly want that card at that point. They pick that one up. Then you've sold that, you buy another card. So we're just going to continue basically doing that and then I'm going to come back to you once it's done. But that's the whole concept of what you do there. The only other thing I want to add to that before I do jump away quickly is when using this filter like we were doing with a 10 to 10.5. So we started like this and then we double check this. When you're wondering when to stop this is when your maximum buy now hits the maximum price what you think is a fair for per card. So as we said, our budget's up to 30k per special. When we get to 30k buy now, you stop. And you go back to the beginning or you put Hunter in here and you do the same thing. When you go back to, let's say you go back to the beginning on Shadow, put your min, uh, max price here, put it to 15 mil. Doing that allows it to generally like refresh, make sure something's different on the page when searching basically. Even if you go back to the beginning because sometimes it glitches. So you basically repeat that process or if you have as many coins in the world as you think, then whenever this budget gets to 200k or 300k, whatever the maximum sell price is on the site basically, whenever you get to that stage... That's when you stop and you go back to the beginning. So I'm going to continue doing this concepts now and then I'm going to come back once I've got some more cards. I just wanted to jump back in quickly and just mention I have the biggest issue with checking back to cards that are on open bids. So I can sit here and watch the cards. This is one thing you need to practice yourself though. I really, I really myself just don't remember. My brain, my attention span is like awful. But you're supposed to check back to your bids, okay? Like I, I completely forgot these were expiring and... This sold below the buy price. The buy price is 34k. The sell is 37. 
So there was a deal right there to be taken. I can't remember if the Ferran Torres was at the buy price, but I'm sure this Allen as well was at the buy price. So just because I forgot to look at the market instead of uh, checking my transfer targets before they expired, I've missed out on deals. But this is one error I still make and I'm very advanced with this stuff, but that's because I don't typically bid. I'm normally someone that snipes, but this is the easiest way to trade and pick up the cards basically. So I'm going to come back to you once I've actually got more deals. Okay, so using that method, I managed to get a few more deals. Got the Delaney and the Akanji using that method. So I got the Delaney for 23k. The sell price on the site is 27.5. The buy was 23, so that's a perfect buy price with the chem style shadow. As it states on the site, it will tell you shadow or hunter. It will like either shadow, hunter, or shadow or hunter. If you have any of them options, it will tell you which ones to buy with. I'm now going to show you the other alternative, which is still not the refresh filter. Special shadow. And then put 10 into here, put 20 into here, and put 30 into here. You can even do 25 here. Simply search the market, and you're looking at all these open bids, okay? So you, you literally, first before you even watch that card, although it's obvious that's a buy, you go to the site and you'd search Leroy Sane or whatever, Salif Sane. Yeah, Salif Sane, just type in Sane if you need to, but you should type the full name if you had, like, just to make it easy to find the card. So the buy price of a Shadow or Hunter, which just has a Shadow, is 18,000, the set is 21.5k. So you can try win these basically through bidding instead. The buy price for Elvedi is 11k, he's on a bid for 10,250. So if you win these on bid instead, you'll see that there's another alternative over just searching one by one or using the mass filter. So if you try this, it could be another option for you to basically win deals. Put in these numbers to how you wish, okay? Um, you can try 15, 30, and then 42 into here or something. Like, you can try like this. And again, if there's a possibility you think there's a deal on the market, like the Nathan Ake, simply search Nathan Ake, and the buy price is 17, one to watch of a shadow. He has a shadow card. So, if you could watch that as well and try win it on bid. Again, I'm horrific at winning bids because I always forget, but we did actually manage to win one on bid, which I forgot to mention. Got in for the bang on the buy price, and I'm pretty sure the sell price on him is 38,000 coins. So, all these right now are looking very good. Um, when it comes down to the actual refresh filter, this is not a static filter, okay? This changes very, very regularly. And this goes for Xbox, PlayStation. I don't think you can do it on PC. Possibly. I've never looked, though. I can't imagine it's active. Simply put in special into here. Put into the chemistry style shadow. I don't think it works with Hunter because basically with Hunter, uh, there's too many pages, I think, but we can double check. You put 10k min price into this box this time, the first one. Again, the same thing applies to Xbox, but you'll understand how to spread it out as I go along. You now press R1 into here and put it to 12k or RB on X, just basically put it to 12,000 coins and simply put your min buy now price, okay. Very important you do this. Put this to 13,250. I always advise doing this. Because you don't want to be fixing the filter regularly from a UCL card. So this is why I always advise like this, okay? Again, do not just look at that filter when I say it and think, oh yeah, this is the filter. I'll check it in an hour and it'll work. Or I'll check it from me just looking at the video and it'll work. I expect it to work. Now what you need to understand here is you need to make this so there's only one card with less than an hour remaining above the hour. The maximum amount above the hour there can be is one card. So you notice here, this is the final card below the hour, okay? So out of Gomez, Tellez, Ndombele, Laporte, all these cards basically, okay? You need to basically fix this, okay? So the way to do this, the quickest fix I can see straight off that is you need to look at the max, look at the start price on all these cards. If they have a current bid over the start price, look at that. Again, Xbox or PlayStation, same thing. So you're looking at the start price on here first, okay? And we're noticing there's a lot of 10.750s and 11Ks. We must have our max price, which is the second bar, too high. What's that bid price on? 11.250, okay? So that means that our bid price is too high. So now all we do is put this back, and then basically we're changing this maximum price here down to 11,000 coins, okay? Doing that, we'll put anything with a start price or current bid of 11,250 or higher will basically not now show up above the hour. So you'll see how we've probably got rid of the T&E in form now because I had a bit of 11,250. So that's the first thing you're going to notice has disappeared. There's no T&E in form on these pages anymore. Not because he sold, but because we put the maximum price to 11,000 coins. As you can see, all these start prices 
or if they have a current bid that overrides the start price, because again, you, that's 10,750 is just a current price. All their current prices are 10,750 and 11K. All right, due to this, if you put your maximum price, so again, the second bar down, if you put that to 10.5K now, you're gonna notice all these cards with a bid of 10,750 or a start price of 10,750 or greater will now disappear. So if we now change this down and we search, you're now going to see a lot of the ones above the hour have disappeared. There may still be more than one or two, so we'll figure out how to fix that afterwards. Okay. We've now got it to the stage of having four in the market. And you can see there's a 14, 15. Like now, now what we're looking at, okay, we're looking at the buy now price, okay, because we've changed the maximum price down as far as we possibly can. You don't want to change that further down because the whole concept of this method is using this filter is... People that rage sell their teams don't change their start price when they uh, sell their cards. So you look at these as either noob listings or people that are running blind of whatever the footbin tells them or whatever they decide they want to sell their card for, which is where you can find the deals. So due to this, we need to now figure out how to fix this where there's only one card above the hour still. and We've managed to get it down to four so far. So the quickest solution I can see right now would be to look at the buy now prices. Again, the buy now is the third one down now, not the second one. Um, and you're looking at the buy now, which is 35,000, 14,000, 15,000, 17,500. So in order to get this to only one above, like one basically there, you now work with your minimum buy now price on the filter, okay? So 14,000, 15,000, 17,500, and 35. If we put our minimum buy now price in the third line down on the filter when I show you, if we put that to 17,750, you'll notice the tellers cannot show up because our minimum buy now on searching has to be 17,750 or more. Which I mean, Tellers can't sharp, Gomez can't sharp, and he can't sharp because he's 17.5. So you'll notice here when I do this, again, the same thing applies to Xbox, just work around the prices you see. Now, when I do this, you're going to now see there's only one card at maximum above the hour. Again, as I've done it, I've just gone and fixed it, okay? And someone's broken it, alright? The reason that's happened is just bad timing. Due to that, you have to use your common initiative that you know, like, if you have enough coins, okay? An informed shadow can sell, like you guarantee to sell every informed shadow at 12,000 coins. So you can bid 10, 750 in this, okay? So if it comes to this stage where there's two cards like this, your solution is to bid on the card that's got the value. Great. Like obviously, it's got to be worth more than the card. If not, just wait for someone else to buy the card or for it to expire. So, or you could wait 16 minutes if you couldn't fix it, but you shouldn't have to do that. If you have enough coins, which is normally the people doing special trading can afford to do this, you would bid on this card, okay? which I'm going to do just to show the example. But again, now I'm going to be set back 10,750. If I bid 10,750 on this card, remember what we did at the start with a 10 and 10,5 min max price? Due to that, this card, when I back out and change something, it's not going to sharp with this card now. So now it's our filter. Minimum price is 10,000. Maximum price is 10,5. The minimum buy now has to be 17,750. The reason for the 15 million is because you need to change this every time you make an alteration like that to ensure it's refreshing the page. So I've changed the maximum buy now there, and I will see the max the max price was ten and a half. Now you're going to see there's only one card above the hour, right? So now all you do now is you press X on the card at the end, go down to buy it now, and now press Circle or B on Xbox. Doing that is basically allowing you to save one step when sniping because you have to keep doing this. So notice how it saves over buy now when I press Circle and X. Now the whole formula to buy a card is X X D pad up X. I'm not going to obviously buy that card, but. All you now have to do, now there's only one card above the hour at maximum. Again, there can be no cards above the hour. It's not a big deal, but it has to be only one card at maximum above the hour for this to refresh when comparing price. Now, all you do is compare price, go back. If brand new cards pop up, they will land on top of the card where you are. So again, all you now do is you search on the market, search onto the website and you search Mendy. The buy price is 48k for this card. So if we get this deal, which we did, it told us to buy at 48,000 and sell for 53,000 of a shadow. We just got it for 47k of a shadow. The only downside to this method, instead of using searching one by one, is you aren't going to spot anomalies before you before you buy cards, okay? Like basically, like we showed at the very start of the video where I checked the card if it was too mass supplied, I didn't fancy it as much. And again, I've broke one of the rules of buying a card above my budget, but it should be okay as I've got a few good deals. The only other thing I want to say with this is... During peak hours, this is very, very hard to do because you have to be a very fast typer using a keyboard or memorize prices very well, okay? Because 
there is a lot of people that use these methods and a lot of them either guess what they're buying and just run blind basically or they know the price is very like far too well like basically they've done their revision on what they're buying and what they're selling during these hours it's a lot less active that cards pop up so early hours in the morning uk time there it's a lot less active but as you can see when they do pop up i have time to sit here and search on the site like this and realize that's not a buy and that will still be there obviously because that wasn't a buy but as you see with the mendy that i got i had time to go search the site and still get the deal again it's just down to you how, how patient you are personally i wouldn't really recommend this whole filter in itself or this concept but if you think you're a good muscle memorizer and you can memorize quite a few names it's definitely beneficial because you can get some really good snipes on that but what i'm going to do now is list all the cards i have up and i'm going to come back to you tomorrow after we see what the results we get off these cards okay so we're back the following day um we're back at 202,000 coins as you can see we've currently sold five out of eight of the special cards that we bought yesterday um so what happens in this situation where you have failed to sell let's say the other three cards that you might have had you don't want to sit there and refer back to the sell price on the new update from the site because it could be different to the point where you might have to lower your price too much to lose too many coins and it doesn't mean that they can't rebound it's just we have to issue safe prices every single day for as you buy so in this situation we didn't manage to sell the Halstenberg, the Akanji or the Amavi so what I'd suggest doing if you get into the situation with cards after a 12 hour listing is you can either keep trying to relist on one hour listings during the day to see if you can get any bites on your cards or you simply go gold team the week on the card itself find out how much he's roughly going for of a shadow right now again you're finding the average price you're not finding just where there's one on the market so if you put 31 and a half k in which was the sell price you was issued you'll see there's still only five or six okay now a very key feature here i'd look at is you need to be cheaper than anything above the hour now so you've tried a 12 hour list in and it didn't sell Thirty thousand seven hundred fifty coins is the cheapest on the hour like after the hour okay all these you can ignore because what will happen is once these expire if these people do not relist their cards then you will become the cheapest on the market for a current point and if that current point someone's looking for a Halstenberg or they need the player for their team or something they'll obviously pick up your card because it'll be the cheapest on the market with the shadow so if you want to in the situation i would then advise to either list at thirty thousand coins just to try and get rid of it now after a 12 hour listing or you can simply relist for one hour listings at the sell price you was issued yesterday and hope for the best or you can just try and break even after tax. You do you want to try and avoid as much loss as possible in any remainders you have. You shouldn't really end up in too many situations of losing coins. And if you do, it's only normally 1k. So all we really have to get for this card to break even after tax is 29. So if you want to just try 29 all day in that situation, you do the same for any card you get. Work out the tax, etc. You can just keep this in like this and just try and get a bite on the card. So if I list a 29, okay. Again, I said you can do 30, but as the coins are quite low. You want to just try and sell the cards so just try and break even after tax on the remaining cards that you have if you have to lose the tax that's not a big deal because it's normally 1k but try to avoid losing any coins on remaining cards that don't sell after a 12 hour listing so you have three options between how you sell them like i just said what i'm going to go and do now as i've now explained specials in full thing and to keep this video down as much as possible is i'm just going to go farm the coins up using the live filters again whilst i've now explained specials and then I'll get back to you once I pick up a bunch more deals. I just wanted to come back quickly just to explain. I'm going back to the trusty method from episode 2. That made us an absolute fortune. I'm using gold rare center mid shadow. Um, 1.6k is the current price you have to put in. Because the uh, prices have changed since yesterday's episode. So what we're going to do now is simply there's only one above the hour as you can see. We're going to simply hover over buy now. The reason you do that and then press circle or B on Xbox is because when you press X now, it hovers over buy now. So the whole combination to snipe is X, X, D-pad up, X. And that's how you buy cards. So now all you're looking for here is any card ideally below 1.3K if you see the card. You see there's not too many Suzokos as well and he's a very popular card. So these will sell for 1.600 like you see. They just take patience. So you know that Suzoko sells for 1.6 of a shadow. Ideally, you're looking for anomalies as well. So all you do is you simply go to the end, 
press compare price, go back, and brand new cards pop up to the right hand side. There it glitched. So if it glitches like that, just to ensure it's not bugged, because sometimes when you do that, it does bug out like here. Sometimes it won't refresh when it bugs like that. So what I always advise doing is backing out just putting your maximum price to 15 million. The reason you do that is just so you ensure that you've got a new thing on the search. Just make sure it's actually refreshing. Just search again now. Go back to the end so you're set up again. Simply go down to buy now, hover over it, and now literally anything below 1.3K you simply buy. And if you see anomalies like Ronaldo Sanchez, like this, you buy these cards. So this is what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna come back to you once I get a bunch of deals. Okay, so I've been doing that for about 10, 15 minutes. I've picked up like 75 plus deals, mostly centre mids. As you can see, there's one left back now. I will get into this in a second. Just before I continue, um, I bought all these below 1.4, like I said. Like some of these cards, like Fred, are worth like 2.7k. Lorente's are worth, where is he? We did manage to get Lorente's. I don't think he's showing up from here. We've got two Marcus Lorente's at 1.3k as well, and he's worth like 2.9. So basically, this is how I this method is. You'll see a lot of the players I do end up getting is uh, Sizoko because obviously he's the cheapest seller, but he does re he sells really good just if you're patient. So there's one more than 50 cards, but you can only see 50 in the signed. What I want to now note is if you look at this here and you put centre mid in here, after you do this for a little bit, you're going to start remembering what players are worth. Like when you buy the Freds at 1 4, you remember you went and checked their price to sell. So imagine like you go and Imagine we're going to sell these cards now, yeah? So we go and check the cards we bought. This is what you should do to every card you buy. So the Freds. Again, you account that he hasn't been position changed because his pack pool position is a centre mid. So you look Fred. You put Shadow. And you find the price where he's averagely selling for. Which currently seems to be a little bit cheaper than usual. But again, we paid 1.3k for the card. You can get 2,500 for this card of ease. You do not have to undercut this price because the way this works is that players like Fred are very demanded, okay? The shadow card on this does sell. Like a lot of this will sell for 2,500 within 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So now you know that he sells for 2,500, you're going through all the cards doing that to sell your cards. You're going to start memorizing these players. You're going to be like, okay, so I sold Fred three hours ago for 2,500. So if you want, instead of sitting there fo solely focusing on the compare price bit, what you can do. Is put centre mid in, sorry. And obviously put this up to like 1.9 and just search the market. Ignore all the cheap ones like 20 minutes left. Look at cards from 30 minutes onwards because the way chem styles sell like this, okay, that was under 1.6 so it would have come up anyway. But if you see any players here that you remember that you sold for like 2,500, 3,000 coins or centre attacking mid to CMs, then you know you can pick these cards up because they don't typically sell rapid. Like a lot do, but... The bigger ones that worth like you can get 4k for the ones you remember like fred that sell for like 27 or something sometimes they sit at 2 1 they just sit on the market so there's no harm in going out there and just like essentially putting your price up higher but obviously looking for the cards that you know are worth more money so like if we just go through here again if there's any players i feel that might be worth more like lamer might be worth more i'm just going to add them to the watch list just go through but basically doing this way you're just looking for anomalies still. If you don't know what an anomaly is, it's basically where there's one difference to the other cards or it's one difference to another, basically. Go on Google if you need the full definition. I'm not a fucking scientist or whatever the fuck the word is. Um, now what you want to do is go left back because this is the other one I just found out. Uh, gold left back or right back, I'm pretty sure, but we're going to use left back right now. Again, it's the same concept of sensor mids. So what you're looking for here is the differences in cards. So... What you can do is start memorizing players like Shules, okay? So now you see at 1.6k, you know that every gold left back shadow sells for at least... They mostly sell for 1.7. There's only like 10 on the market at 1.7, okay? So ideally, anything at 1.5 should be a buy. But obviously, cars like Kim are slower to sell. The Shules are slower to sell. But what you can go and do is just double check Shules because he looks like a deal to me. If they go for anything near a 1.8, yeah. So these are both buys. Because you see, like, they're just sitting. But again, it's midday. Like, these will sell. So all I've got done there is just looked up Shawls of Shadow. Seeing there's only two at 1.5. None at 1.8. None at 1.9. The next cheapest is 2k. So as they weren't selling rapidly, I'm just going to put them up for 1.9k. I made 300 coins per card for two cards that were sitting there. No competition to buy the card. So all you're doing on this method is putting 1.5 in. Or 1.6. Because obviously, up to 1.7, I'm pretty sure. Let's just double check. 
up to 1.7 and you're looking for anomalies again. So any card that you don't see here at the price of 1.7 or less is ideally probably a good deal. So if we compare price and go back, you'll see brand new cards like Resilison. We're just going to have a punt on him just to see. Kamara because he's below. Anything below 1.4 you can buy as well, obviously. But if you see anomalies that aren't on this page, like Rusillison, then you can pick them up basically because they should be a deal. Again, when it comes to it, you're not risking any coins doing that because you know they sell for at least 1.7 anyway. So like the tax is like 70 coins. That's the worst case you lose. Again, there's one for 1.8. That doesn't mean anything. Again, 1.9 is only one. This card's quite good as well. Bear that in mind. So again, this card will sell for 2k easily. It's just they, they do take time to sell. This is something that people do not understand with gold rare shadows or special shadows or anything in related to just trading generally. You are waiting with chem stoles. You're not you're not just sniping a Albamiang for 31k when he averagely sells for 35. You're buying with the chem stole. Due to that chem stole, you're selling to a specific, a specific person. So because of that, you need to account that it might take time to sell cards. So what I'm going to go do is list up all these cards I bought and then I'm going to come back to you once they've sold. Okay, so I've listed up all the cards that I had. There's only two left to sell. This is why I'm so like, repetitive of saying check the positions because this is a striker. Like His pat pull position is striker. I got him centre mid and shadow for 1.2k. Like Striker to centre mid in itself would cost about 5,000 coins plus in consumable cards. Even more actually because centre attack and mid to centre mid is 5k alone. So that would cost about 8,000 coins plus the shadow. Like the card's worth well above 10k in cost to make the card how it is. So there's going to be none of this card in the market. But I've forgotten his name. But I'm just going to have to guess. All right. Let me just double check his name. Avila. Let's just double check. Ezekiel Avila. So if you look at this card on the market, he won't be on the market. So if you look shadow generally, like there's none on the market. Hunter, he's on the market. 2.5k. Is there any incentive mid generally? Like I've, I know I've got a shadow, but no. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to list for like... I know that the card, if I like the card cost to make it into that would cost about 14,000 coins because consumables like that are expensive. You're never going to get 10k for the card because no one would just ever do that. But... If you go like 7.2k and just try your luck, like there's always a chance these kind of cards can sell. So we're just going to try that and see how it goes. So again, the same thing with Terrell. He's normally a CDM. I got him in centre mid for 750 coins with a shadow. So again, just did the same thing. Okay, shadow. So the card naturally is worth around 3.7k. I have a centre mid, but I noticed there was a centre mid there. So yeah, we're in this situation, just do 3.6. But like in some cases, you can charge more money for the con like the conversion. So I'm going to come back to you once all this stuff is sold. As you can see, stuff's already selling. And we'll see how many coins we're at. Okay, so I'm back a few days later on the account. And 71 out of 76 items have sold. You can see we managed to sell the Halstenberg and we had to lower the Amavi. But we sold all that. We also sold basically everything from the conversion thing I showed previously. As you can see, that striker to centre mid we got did in fact sell for 7.2k. And we've still got an inform left and 292,000 coins now. So now what I'm going to advise you guys do alongside what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and pick up more special cards alongside blending it with chem style gold, so tier 2 chem style filters, or I'm going to use the filter like I did here. So what I'll go and do now is just pick up a bunch of deals and I'll get back to you once I've done that. Alright guys, so I've picked up a bunch of deals. Uh, I got all these through snipes and just cards sitting on the market. Um, we also got a few on bids as well, as you can see. Got a really good deal on this. So we got all these deals. And I want to give you guys a little tip of what I've just found out. As another way to identify deals. What you want to do is gold team of the week. Like this seems to work for some reason. Um, you put 10 into the min. 13 at the max. Sorry 13 and a half. And you change this every time okay. So the important feature is you start at 15 million in here. And you just change this every time. So when we search the market what we're looking for is we go around to the 45th minute onwards 
and we're basically identifying anything that could be a deal. So if we see a deal, for example, if we think, okay, this Madison might be good, we check them on the site. So we're doing this to everyone. And once you've checked all the deals, you simply back out and just literally go again. So you change this pricing by one or two, whatever. All that does is enable it to refresh. So now when I search again, you see if there's any new cards, they pop out to the right hand side and you just simply keep repeating this. I, uh, Gold Team of the Week is the best one because a lot of it classes under fodder. So a lot of deals do pop up on this filter. As you can see, brand new cards are right here. Again, you can switch between Hunter and Shadow. This should work on Xbox and PC as well. Again, if you're wondering why you had the min and max price like that, it is due to it is due to their listing prices. When noobs sell their cards, they simply put their min price start instead of uh, rising the price. So you can find a bunch of deals like this, basically. So all you're doing, again, is just going through cards one by one and just looking for a deal. So I'm going to try one more time here just to try and pick up one live. If not, we'll come back once I've listed all these cards up. Unless this will be a deal here, Felix. No, okay, so I'll come back to you once I've uh, listed these cards up. So what I've gone and done is picked up 26 deals from the tier 2 chem style filters now. So whilst we're selling specials, we already sold one of the um, Zielinskis. So as we're selling specials, we also blend it with gold chem styles as our budget still though. So I'll get back to you tomorrow once everything's hopefully sold. And that'll be the summary of episode 3. Okay, so we're back the following day. Everything's basically sold. All the specials did manage to sell first time, apart from the Muria. So what I did is I simply just searched up Muriel. Again, I paid 18000 for that. I just worked more around the current price for the day, as you can see there. And it sold pretty quickly as I did this. I didn't lose money, I made still. So I paid eighteen, and I think I was going for 24500 We ended up getting 2175 just to get rid of it quickly. So yeah, we got 21750 for the cards. So that's going to be the end of this episode. In the next one, we're going to be blending specials possibly one icon that's very cheap if we can but again i'm not advising you do that with that budget but we'll basically be farming from 350 probably towards 500 000. hopefully this has been helpful again